Hello everyone, this is Ömer Karagüzel and welcome to another tutorial of building performance modeling with Design Builder program. In this tutorial, I would like to focus on solar photovoltaic power system modeling features. And I will, similar to other tutorials, I will use this simple building case. Before going into details, let me show you the overall steps that we are going to follow in this tutorial for the generation of solar photovoltaic power systems or in short solar PV systems. The first step is creating the geometry for the PV arrays, right? We should create the surface geometry first. Of course, we need to pay attention to some details like the active area and the overall PV area. And I will talk more about this in a minute. The second step is assigning this, assigning an electrical performance model to the solar PV arrays and some other details. The third step is the creation of this electrical performance model and saving into the design builder library using actual manufacturer's specifications. There are some things to do in between and we will talk more about, more about this. Step four is basically including electrical load center that will handle the solar PV arrays together with the DC to AC inverter equipment. As you know, the solar generated electricity is direct current and at some uses it should be converted to alternative current. And DC to AC inverters takes, take care of this job. An electrical load center make this management. And the last and the fifth step is running an annual simulation and getting results related to photovoltaic electrical performance. After having seen, seen this, let's have a look at the, our building case and let's start thinking. Here, we use detailed geometry generation and modification tools of design builder interface and draw our solar PV array geometry. But these, there are some things that we need to pay attention. The first thing is the generated solar PV area should not be random, but it should be multiples of the active unit PV module area. For instance, if you have a, say, one meter square of a P active PV unit module area, then the generated PV array geometry, which is a collection of multiple PVs, should have been an integer multiple of this one meter square, such as five. So if I have five PV models of one meter square, I have five meter square entire area for the overall PV array. And this means that I have five unit PV modules connected in series to form the PV module drawn in the build, design builder interface. Okay, we are talking about active area. How do we get the active area? We get it from the manufacturer's specification. Here you see a sample polycrystalline PV module from Solar World and it's about 100 watts as you see in the name. Let's scroll down to the second page and focus on the geometric properties. I will focus on the geometric properties here related with the cell dimensions and cells per module. As you know, solar PV modules are composed of individual solar cells. This module, for example, has 7 to 2 solar cells connected in series, electrical connection. And I have the cell dimensions. Here, I see that each cell is about 52 mm by 156 mm. Solar cells are normally found in rectangular or square shapes. Here, I have a rectangular shape. So, moving onwards, I can open up the calculator and just calculate the area of this solar cell. And then times 72, right? Because I have 72 
solar cells in this module. I can calculate the entire active area. But remember, this is millimeter square, so I should convert it to meter square by dividing by 1 million. And this is my area. It's about 0 0.58 meter square. Now, pay attention to this detail. If I scroll down, I see the drawing, the graphic depiction of the PV module, and I have the dimensions like 1001 millimeters, 734 millimeters. So if I launch another calculator and basically I can calculate the total area again by multiplying these dimensions of this rectangle and dividing by 1 million, it's about 0.73 meters square. And this is different from active area, 0.58. So this is because of the fact that this large area happens because I have frame, I have spacing in between individual solar cells. So I, there are some inefficiencies in terms of active solar collecting area. So we will not use this area, but we will focus on this area point 55A4 and goes on uh, as the active unit PV module area. So back to the drawing canvas, I can use this place construction line option and I choose some guidelines or construction lines first just zoom into an empty place on the canvas and choose this construction line creation I can turn off protractor help tool now and say it is one meter by 0.584 meters and then these are only the guidelines right I can click on the top ribbon Go to this icon, draw solar collector and click on it. I have two options. We will not use hot water collector. This is photovoltaic collector. And I select this and I just created my PV module geometry. This is the unit geometry. As you see instantly, a new element is added to the component tree, solar collector one with an area of 0.58 meters square. So this is my unit PV module. And I created it by paying attention to this active unit area. I can create a PV array which is multiples of this PV by say selecting it and copy and paste and copy and paste and repeat this step again and again as much as it can go but this is not the efficient way to do that. Instead I will choose create an entire geometry like say 5 meters by 0.84 meters and I can go back to this draw collector photovoltaic collector and I will choose this area and created my small little PV array but I know that let's get rid of this first and the second one delete yes and I know that this PV array is composed of this unit array and it is five times the area, but it is integer multiple. Okay, one is 2.92, the other is 0.584. So I know the number of modules that goes into my PV array. So I should keep this in mind. And it is, for my case, it is five. So my PV array composed of five PV modules. So I will go back this and then just delete it. Yes, and we can also get rid of this construction line by right-clicking on the canvas and remove, remove all construction now. Now, this geometry is a solar collector geometry. And you can pay attention to changing the azimuth angle, which is the orientation or the horizontal angle of this PV array. Which orientation is it facing? Or you can work on the tilt angle, which is the vertical rotation angle of different solar PV arrays that you generated. So if you choose it, and then say up rotate selected and I will create protractor I will hit one degrees of increment so this tool rule will help me so I will select and I can rotate I can change the azimuth angle whichever I like in 360 so but I'm not going to do that I will assume the same southern facing orientation for this array but also I can choose it and I again I choose rotation Excuse me, I choose the rotation and then just go to the site, pick the vertical 
and now I can rotate it in the vertical plane. I can give it an angle, say 27, and this PV array is tilted 27 degrees to the south. So this is usually tilted this way, the rooftop solar collectors. But remember, you may have also horizontal PV arrays in the form of shading devices, like in the form of overhangs, then the tilt angle should be equal to zero. Okay, so, and I can select this and select move, just move it, but zoom in a little bit and pick a point and to the edge of the building, pick a point and I change the location. So I put it in the right location on, the, on my building and I can generate more arrays and I can multiply the arrays, but I should keep in mind the number of PV modules in the arrays. So this is basically how you create the geometry for your solar PV arrays. The next job is assigning a photovoltaic electrical performance model to, the, to this uh, PV geometry.